It's funny to think about this, isn't it? We take time to design a house before we build it. We get our clothes designed before we wear them. Everything that is man-made is designed before it's made. At least, we had an idea before the outcome was decided. But when it comes to life, no one bothers to design their life. The most precious thing of all, life, must be designed. Holtz once said, if you're bored with life, if you don't get up every morning with a burning desire to do things, you don't have enough goals. Now, all successful men and women have one thing in common, goal setting. Goal setting I call the master skill of success. With it, everything is possible. Without it, nothing is possible. And fortunately, goal setting is a learned skill. It's a skill that everyone can master and anyone can learn if they're willing to put in the effort. You see, it's very liberating when you finally realize that you have the power to make your life whatever you want it to be. It's a wonderful feeling knowing that your success does not really depend on anyone else. Most of the people on this planet do not get what they want because they don't know what they want in their life. You see, most people never go after what they want because they don't know every step they have to take to get there. I want you to think of a person going up the side of a wall of ice. Now, the only rule for reaching a goal that you have to know is knowing where you're going and knowing that you're going to get there. You do not have to know how you're going to get there. Now, pay attention to this for a moment. Imagine the climber has all his equipment. He's got his crampons, he's got his climbing rope, his hardware, his ice axes. How does he get to the top? He's standing on the ground and he's looking at maybe a hundred foot vertical wall of ice. He looks up and he has absolutely no idea the path that he's going to take. He just sees himself at the top. He reaches up and he puts one pick in and then another pick. Then he raises one foot and then the other. Now he's not standing on the ground any longer. He's suspended on the wall on a vertical wall of ice that goes up for a hundred feet. He adapts to the changes that is taking place in his environment. And then and only then does he see the next step. And he moves this pick, then this pick, then this foot, then this foot. Now. That's how he gets to the top, a step at a time. And that's how you're going to get to your goal. You just have to know the first step to take. And when you take that step, you're going to find that your conditions, your circumstance and environment will change. Then you see how you have to make the next step. It's a matter of adapting all the time. You only have to know two things. You have to know where you're going and you have to know that you're going to get there. You've got to see it in your mind. Now, this is the beautiful scenario. This is what it's all about. Save that in your mind and think of it often. Think, every time you think of your goal and you're trying to figure out how you're going to do it, think of that vertical wall of ice. What's the next step? That's all you really have to know. One step at a time. And you'll get to wherever you're going. That's how Hillary got to the top of Mount Everest. By nature, you are a goal-seeking mechanism and you move toward those exciting images and beliefs you hold uppermost in your mind. You know, experts on the science of success know that the brain is a goal-seeking organism. Whatever goal you give to your subconscious mind, the brain will actually start looking for information, for resources, and for opportunities and other ways to achieve the want that you've identified. Now, while this may sound like an impossibility given your current situation or circumstances, We've seen countless individuals literally suddenly get what they want, often from a source or opportunity that already existed in their life or their sphere of influence, but that they had never instructed their brain to find it before. There really is no magic to this at all. By our very nature, we are goal-seeking creatures. Your brain is always trying to align your outer world with what you are seeing and expecting in your inner world. 
what you instruct your brain to look for, the things you want, you will begin to see them. In fact, the object of your desire has probably always existed all around you, but your mind and your eyes weren't open to it. You see, we are surrounded with billions of sensory, visual, audio, physical inputs of information each day. To keep ourselves from going insane, we ignore 99.9% .9 of them. You only really see, hear, or experience those you focus your mind on. Does that make sense? Here's another example. Take this simple test. In the room that you're sitting in right now, count the number of red items that you see. Take five seconds and count as many as you can. Go. How many items did you count? Now, without looking, eyes closed, how many items in the room do you remember that were blue? You probably can't recall many at all. Now open your eyes and focus on all the blue items that you see around the room and you'll probably see a lot more than you remembered. Why? Because the first time you weren't looking for them. Thus, you didn't see them. In your first reality, they didn't really exist at all. So when you define your goals, you give your brain something to focus on and look for. You give your mind a new set of eyes to all of a sudden see all the people, circumstances, conversations, resources, ideas, creativity, and otherwise so it can go about matching up on the outside with what you want on the inside, your goal. Goals make us grow. If we want to discover the unlimited possibilities within us, we must find a goal big enough and grand enough to challenge us, to push us beyond our limits, to discover our true potential. The real purpose of having a goal is not to achieve the goal. Hmm, okay, probably had you up until that point. But no, the real purpose of setting a goal, in my opinion, is to see who do you need to become in order to achieve the goal. So there's no magic in thinking small because life operates by growth and contribution. Now, if you're not growing, by definition, you're going backwards because everything else is going forwards. So if you set goals that you know, compel you to become more of who you need to be in order to achieve them, then you're on purpose with something. That's the real reason behind setting goals. Your life must be about progress and flourishing changes. You must make that constant shift from where you are to where you want to be. You know, I think that we all should have big goals. I think that we should have a, a huge, ginormous dream. You know, I believe that if your goal doesn't make you a little scared, then you're not dreaming big enough. If your dream don't make your knees knock and your teeth chatter, then dream bigger. That if you know the how, the moment you create the what, then make your what bigger. Don't set your goals realistically, set them entirely unrealistic. I mean, shoot for 80 and be disappointed when you hit 70, as opposed to shooting for 20 and being ecstatic when you hit 21. We beat our goal. Yeah, but it was a low goal. You know, I think, I think to be frustrated and achieving something rather than ecstatic and, and achieving less is a better way to live. Uh, not to mention you achieve more. There is not a single success story that was not goal-inspired. Every human achievement is an accomplishment of a goal. So often, when you're setting a goal, without realizing it unconsciously, you're injecting the values and sometimes the fantasies and the ideals of other people. And when you're setting a goal, you'll hear in the back of your mind, I should do this, I ought to do this, I'm supposed to do this, I need to do this, I got to do this, I have to do this, I must do this. And this is an inner language called imperatives. And these imperatives let you know that the goals you're setting or the, um, the expectations you put on yourself are not really from your own heart, not really from your own highest values, not really what's most important. Not most important to you anyway. It is so important when you set a goal to know what your highest values are, know what's really most important, most meaningful to you, and set a goals that are aligned and congruent with that. When you do, and it's truly congruent, you'll have a different feeling. You won't hear those voices of imperatives. You'll hear the indicatives. You'll go, I love it. 
I'm inspired by it. You'll feel that it's destined. You'll feel it's impossible for you not to fulfill. It is so important not to minimize yourself to other people or compare yourself to other people and admire certain people and go, oh, I should be like that, I ought to be like that, or you're gonna end up with the imperatives and anytime you set a goal that's not in line with your own highest values, you tend to have what is called the ABCDs of negativity, a negative feeling towards yourself because you're trying to be somebody you're not. As Emerson said, envy is ignorance and imitation is suicide. So make sure you set goals that are really important. Your life demonstrates your values and look at what your life truly demonstrates on a daily basis that you spontaneously are inspired from within to go after and set goals that are meaningful, that are aligned with that, that you absolutely are willing to do what it takes to get them. Make sure you set goals that are meaningful to you and in the process of doing it, you'll do something that serves the world. Now here's an interesting revelation for you. Everything you own or what you have become is the result of a goal you have set in the past. If you are what you didn't want to be, it's merely because of the absence of goals that you forgot to set in the past. There's so much clarity and purpose when you write your goals down. Goals are not just words. They are your future that you are carving. Only 3% of adults have written goals and everyone else works for them. Write it down. This is called a psychoneuromotor activity where you actually write the goal down physically on paper and it activates all your mental powers. It programs it into your hard drive and then your subconscious works on it 24 hours a day until it's achieved once you write it down. Put a smile on your face. Let's get that enthusiasm and energy pumping in your heart. Get ready. You're about to chase your dreams. It's very important to jot down whatever comes to your mind. Let go of any judgments or self-imposed limitations. Put your dreams and goals down on paper. First, you're going to start with your personal development goals. This set of goals will create your ideal future in terms of personal and social development. You'll be clear about what kind of person you want to be in the future. Don't think or rationalize too much, just go with the flow. Write rapidly, pouring your desires inside out. Do it as quickly as possible. Let your dreams and aspirations pour out of you. Don't limit yourself. Don't think about how you're going to achieve them. Those steps will follow later. Right now, just write whatever you feel at this moment. Write down anything you want to achieve within a month or within the next 20 years. Let's not look into when or how. Just write what it is that you want in your personal development goals. Here are the questions that you need to answer. Start writing rapidly. Here you go. What would you like to create in life? What are the experiences you want to create? What are the areas in your life you want to excel at the most? What do you want to be known for? What areas of life do you need to improve upon? What subjects do you want to master? What is the area of your key interest? What are your learning goals? What skills, abilities, and attitudes do you want to master? What books do you want to read? What subjects do you want to master? Do you want to achieve any artistic goals, something to do with cultural activities? What training programs do you want to take up? What seminars or concerts do you want to participate in? Is there any knowledge you want to acquire in particular? What do you seek to learn? What information and skills will you need to achieve your lifetime goal? What is that one skill that if you develop it will tremendously change your income? What is your competitive advantage or a unique strength that you want to work on? What do you want to be good at? Do you want to learn new hobbies or skills such as dancing salsa, singing, learning a new language, new sport or activity? Do you want to learn yoga or meditation? Do you want to take up any classes, learn any new language? What character traits do you want to develop? Do you want to be more energetic, enthusiastic, passionate, patient, loving and positive? 
What are your emotional goals? What emotions do you want to control? Do you worry too much? Or are you mostly anxious about everything in general? Do you get angry? Or do you get provoked easily? What emotion do you need to work on so that you can be happier and peaceful? Is there any part of your mindset holding you back? Is there any part of your behavior that upsets you? If so, set a goal to improve that behavior. What behaviors do you want to change? Do you have any goals to be more relaxed or more attentive? What goals can help you follow your passion? What activities do you want to engage in in order to lift your spirits? What do you seek? Do you want to travel? Where do you want to go? What are the places you want to visit? What are the countries you wish to visit? How do you want to enjoy yourself on a tour? What are your personal and professional relationship goals? Who are the people you want to meet? And whom do you want to be part of your network? Whom do you want to associate with, learn from, or spend time with? Are there any relations that you want to rekindle? People you wish to forgive? Any social activity you want to take up? Or any cause or charity or contribution you wish to give to your community? What are your community goals? What do you want to contribute? Whom do you want to contribute to? Do you want to make the world a better place? If so, what are you going to do about it? What is that one goal that if you set it, will become a legacy? Have you found the soulmate or life partner you want? If you haven't found one, when do you want to meet that person? Do you want to be a parent? How are you going to be a great parent? How do you want to be seen by a partner or by members of your extended family? What is that one goal, if set and realized, that will enable you to be a better person? How do you want the other members of the family to remember you? Do you want to spend more time with your beloved ones? If yes, then what habit do you want to develop to meet this goal? What body weight do you want to achieve? What fitness level do you want to have? Are there any athletic goals you want to achieve? Any sports you want to be a part of? How are you going to be fit? Do you want to go to a gym, go jogging or swimming? Is there any bad habit you must give up in order to improve your health, like smoking or drinking? Do you want to develop new healthy habits? What habits do you want to quit? Do you want to cut down on television and read books or listen to music for better relaxation? Keep writing your goals. Keep going till you've finished writing your personal development goals. If you still need more time, you can always put a pause to this program and finish writing all your personal development goals. In this session of the program, you're going to identify and write down your material goals or possessions you'd like to have, whatever you want to call it. You can write down anything you want to have within a year or the next 20 years, be it home, car, vacation homes, anything. Just write down all your needy-greedy goals. Don't think about how or the why or the when. Be a little patient. All those answers will follow later. Right now, just write those material goals down. All that you want to possess someday sooner. Write down those things that others told you you'd never have. Let your imagination go wild. Write all you truly desire. Let it be a beach house, condo, yacht, personal jet, helicopter, a private island, sports franchise, personal chef, butler, or a personal massage therapist. It's okay to enjoy a material life. We are all spiritual creatures having a physical experience. Now, if you've not taken a vow of poverty, you can just go wild here with all those dreams others told you would never be possible by you. Just keep writing. Don't stop yourself. Write your greedy shopping list for this year. Write a list of things you want, not what you think you can get. Be imaginative and creative in your wants. Don't be limited in your desires. The truth is that what you become as a person, achieving all your material goals, is the biggest gift you can give to yourself and others. Just like that saying, we don't change over time. We only become more of ourselves. This is irrespective of whatever we possess. Make your shopping list. Write down gifts you want to give to your loved ones, exotic vacations, or anything that money can buy. Make your I want list. I want, followed by all your wishes. Take your time. 
write all your material goals. In this section of goal setting, you can write your ultimate financial goals or your money goals. How much money do you want to earn every month? What annual income do you want to have? What is the net worth you want to have? How much do you want to make in one year after taxes? What are your investment goals? Write down anything related to finance, savings, investments, real estate, mutual funds, stocks and shares, contingency funds, etc. What are your business goals if you're a business person? Write all your business goals. What do you want to achieve within a year or 20 years from now in terms of your business goals? What is your dream business? Create a set of definite, measurable, achievable, concrete numbers, numerical targets. Are you leading your dream business? If not, what would your dream business be like? How many people do you want to impact in your lifetime through your business, your products, your services? How many customers do you want to serve in the next one year? What is the market share you want to achieve in the next one year or five years? What is the number of items you want to sell monthly and annually? What is the number of consumers you want to serve in the next five years? What are the annual sales you're expecting in your business? What is the expected ideal turnover in a year? What is the net worth and net income you want to have? What value do you want your stocks to have if you own a public limited company? What are the new acquisitions and mergers you want? What new markets do you want to enter? How many new branches do you want to open? Keep writing all your business goals. If you're employed, write your career and professional goals. Are you in your dream job? If not, what is your dream job? What is that one job that you'll enjoy the most? What gives you the greatest feeling of importance? What career growth do you desire? What promotions do you want? What title or rank do you want in a year or five years from now? How much salary do you want? Which firm do you want ultimately to work with? Whom do you want to work with? What is that one goal that if you set and realize it, will take your career to where you want to be? Whom do you want to team up and partner with? Who are the people in your ideal team? Who will make it into your ideal team? What are their names? Whom do you want to partner with, collaborate with in the future? If you're done writing all your goals, the next step in the exercise is to set a deadline to your goals. Set a very clear, specific target to aim at. This acts like a forcing system for your subconscious and your superconscious minds, and what it does is it motivates and drives you forward to achieve that goal. So set a deadline. If it's a big enough goal, set sub-deadlines and break it down into parts, and then keep thinking about the deadline. Remember, goals must be time-bound. Against each goal that you've written down, write a timeline next to it. A timeline is the deadline to accomplish your goals. If it's one year or less than one year, write one or mark one next to that goal. Write three for three years, five for five years, and ten and twenty for the next ten and twenty years. Write the timeline you think it's possible for you. Feel it from your gut. Do not think about how you are going to achieve it. Just write a timeline that you think is more realistic and is possible by you to achieve during a particular time frame. Go on, read the goals you've written down and write a timeline next to it. Do it right now for your personal development goals, material goals, economic goals, spiritual goals, and all the other goals you've written. Start now. If you're done with the timeline exercise, then welcome back. Now, pick the top three goals you want to achieve within a year from each section. If you have so many goals, choose the top three goals according to your priority. Pick three goals from each section that you want to achieve within a year. Okay, go on, do that. Now write those three goals you want to achieve within a year from personal development goals, material goals, and economic goals. Friedrich Nietzsche once said, He who has a why for which to live can bear with almost any how. So you always have to ask yourself why you want to achieve a particular goal. Most people 
set really nice goals, but they're what I call our surface goals. They don't really have a big reason why they want to achieve it. And for the most part, their goals sound great. Like, you know, I want to become a millionaire. I want to travel around the world. I want to lose weight. I want to have a great relationship. I want to be happily married. And the problem from purely a brain-based viewpoint and the science of motivation is this. If you have a goal, but you really don't have a big reason, a underlying big reason why you want to achieve it, you simply will not have the deeper motivational drive that your brain requires to keep you motivated and help you overcome the doubts or the fears or the anxieties, the ups and downs, the challenges that are gonna come your way. Writing the why of your goals is the subconscious process in goal setting. If you're clear on the benefits, you're willing to pay the price. When you know the reasons for setting that goal, you'll find enough motivation to achieve that goal. When you have the reasons, you will persevere till the end. So the first thing that you need is you need to have a compelling reason. Like if you look at people that get married, right? They People have never been able to lose weight, suddenly are able to lose weight. Why? Because they have a compelling reason. That reason is, well, I want to look amazing in my wedding dress in front of other people and I want my wedding pictures to look nice, right? So without a compelling reason attached to your goals, it's very hard to achieve. Now let's do another interesting exercise. I want you to write a paragraph on how absolutely you are committed to these goals. Write why you want to achieve these nine goals. Write your motives and reasons why you chose that goal. For each goal listed, write the reasons why you wish to have it. Your why can be attached to a feeling or sensation you get when you accomplish the goal. Remember, most of the things you want in your life have a feeling or an emotion attached to it. The need for something is actually the need to experience a particular feeling. Now write that feeling. What is that feeling you derive from accomplishing a particular goal? Write it down. When I meet this goal, my sensation will be... Followed by your answer. Write that sensation. How do you feel when you fulfill this goal? Go on, write your reasons both emotional and rational. Start now. Okay, so you have the top nine goals and you know for absolute certainty why you want to achieve them. Your feelings and motives are pretty clear to you now. Since you know the why, let's go to the next exercise of how you're going to achieve your goals. Make a list of everything that you could think of that you could do to achieve that goal. And keep writing until the list is complete. If you think of something new, write it on the list. There's something wonderful about breaking things down onto a list. Henry Ford once said the biggest goal in the world can be achieved if you just break it down into enough small steps. Some people ask the question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer, of course, is one bite at a time. But you've got to divide it into bites. In other words, a goal is a big task, and it's easily achievable when you thin slice it. We set big, lofty goals, and immediately they stress us. Your goals are supposed to stretch you, but they're not supposed to stress you. And when your goal stresses you, that means you need to break them down into more bite-sized, palatable, digestible pieces. Here, we use a strategy called chunking. That means slicing down your big goal into small goals. A very large goal should be broken down into more easily manageable tasks with short time scales. Remember the cliche, success by inch is a cinch. And by the yard, it's hard. For every big goal, you need a list of mini goals or a to-do list to achieve them. There are several ways to figure out the action steps or prepare the to-do list to accomplish any goal. One is to consult with people who have already done it. One of the best ways to do that is to find who else has achieved it. So who else has achieved your goal and how could you learn from them what they've done? You could read biographies or autobiographies. You could read books written by people. You could uh, talk to friends of yours that have achieved it. Make contacts with people who have. You could uh, do a course, 
again, by someone who's managed to do it. There's so much information out there, and so much information out there for free, just like this video, for example, by the way. But there's so much information out there for free that you can use to be able to learn and know exactly what strategy you need to use in order to achieve a result. There's people that will tell you for free how to write a book. There's lots of information. So again, go after the information and learn and find the strategy of achieving that goal. You want to lose weight, find out how much you want to lose, and then go online, check it out, talk to people who've lost weight and ask them the questions. They might not have the exact same strategy, all the different people, but you'll be able to find the different choices you have so that you can then try different things and get the result and find out what works for you. Another way is to start from the end and look backward. You simply close your eyes and imagine that you've already achieved your goal. Then just look back and see what was the last thing you did to achieve your goal. And then the thing before that, and the thing before that, until you arrive at the first action you started with. That is starting from the end. One of the key and critical elements of goal achievement is getting your brain to figure out how you can achieve something that you've never achieved before. And the bigger your vision is, the more you're going to get your brain to work for you. The more clear your vision is, the easier it's going to be to block out all the things that you don't need and now create all the things and find all the things that you do need in order to achieve those goals. You can also do a mind-storming exercise. It's also called the 20 idea method, proposed by the father of goal setting, Brian Tracy himself. All you do is take your top four or five goals. Uh, perhaps if you're working in a corporate company, it might be your top four or five projects. And all you do is you write out 20 ways to achieve that goal. 20 different approaches, 20 different things that you can do to make it a reality. Now, this is not a purely mental exercise. It is important to actually write it down. So you're going to need to start in, say, a Microsoft Word file or grab an old uh, pen and a piece of paper. And sometimes writing it out physically is the more effective option. Now, let me give you a very small example of how this might work. My younger sister has, as a goal for this year, get a new car. Now, as a student, she has limited financial means. So what she should do is sit down and write out 20 different ways to get a new car this year. And of course, you might start with things like grand theft auto and bank robbery, but that's only two. Now you have another 18 to go. And it's important that you get as far as writing out all 20, because the first four or five ways usually come quite easily. But then you start getting into six, seven, eight, and nine, and pushing your mind further and becoming more and more focused and more creative. And it's usually somewhere around nine or 10, 10 or 11, that you start getting ideas that you go, hey, I could actually do that. Or perhaps better still, ideas that make you look at them and go, why haven't I been doing that already? 20 different ways to achieve your goal. Whether that's world domination or writing a book, whether it's becoming famous in your field, becoming an icon in your industry, or whether it's simply getting a degree. Whatever the case might be, write out your major goals and come up with 20 different ways to achieve them. The method is simple. Come up with a question. How am I going to achieve this goal? Then come up with 20 answers or 20 ways to achieve one big goal. You need to generate 20 different answers to your questions. Write your goal as a question first, then force yourself to write 20 answers. Keep asking, how am I going to achieve this goal? How am I going to achieve this goal? How am I? How am I? How, how, how? Keep storming your mind. Write a list of possibilities. Make a list of all the possible things that you can do to take your goals forward. Write them down. You need to write all 20 answers. Go on, keep writing 20 answers of how to each goal. Okay, once you've answered the questions for all the goals with 20 answers each, select the answers that you're going to act on immediately. As you take action on one idea, another action will come up. Implement your ideas. These ideas generate new ideas on the way and implement them. Convert your ways of how you're going to achieve goals into a to-do list, a list of 20 activities. Prepare your to-do list like an action plan. Remember, each to-do list is an action step to achieve your goals. Each of them is a mini goal. Once your list is ready, organize the list. How do you organize the list? You organize it two ways. First by sequence, 
is what is the order in which you have to do things, and second of all, by priority. What is more important, what is less important? And remember the 20-80 rule, the first 20% of things you do in the achievement of a goal usually account for 80% of the results that you get. Now you have a goal broken down by sequence and priority, and you have a plan. A person with a goal and a plan can accomplish extraordinary things, sometimes beyond their imagination. Find the one from the to-do list of actions that jumps out of the page at you, or choose the easiest step to get you started. Then choose another step, then another. Do something. Move quickly. Do something immediately to achieve your goal. Do something every day that moves you towards your most important goal, whatever it happens to be. Before you start the day, review what you're trying to do in the first place. Then you're far less likely to get caught up in all the maelstrom and avalanche of activities that don't matter, and you're more likely to focus on those key goals, if you read them every morning. Write weekly plans. Consider the most important activities for a week. You can also use the same procedure on a daily basis. Chunking is the secret of achieving your goals. When you chunk down a mammoth task, it's not overwhelming anymore. And the way you do that is, you have this goal, you have this big goal. Underneath each goal, and, and it might, the numbers might change, but this is a good rule of thumb. Underneath every goal have three milestones. A milestone is a big point that lets you know you're going in the right direction. I, I use that a lot when people are giving me directions because I, I make a habit of getting lost even, yes, even with GPS and Google, <laughs> don't know how it works. So I like to say, what building am I going to pass? What lets me know I'm on the right path? Oh, Lisa, you're going you're gonna to pass a three-story beige building. You know you're going in the right direction. You're going to pass a Chevron station. You know you're going in the right direction. So these milestones let you know that when you hit them, you're going in the right direction. Now, under the three milestones, and mind you, the milestones, the three milestones are under the goal, right? Under the three milestones, under each milestone is at least five action steps. These action steps are the things that are gonna move you forward on a daily basis. Action steps are daily actions that you do to move you towards your goal. Now, when you chunk it down into bite-sized, palatable, digestible pieces, the action steps are getting you to the milestones. The milestones are getting you to the goal. So what you begin to look at is the action steps and the milestones more than you're looking at this big, huge, bodacious, amazing, ginormous goal. You're simply looking at the milestones. And under the milestones, you're laser on the action steps. And that allows you to move forward. Chunk down your goals. Slice them down with action lists. The way to achieve your goals and beat all procrastination habits is to take one small step at a time. The number one success trait of highly successful people is not that they start a lot of things. It's that they finish the things they start. Everybody who's ever achieved anything worthwhile had to overcome obstacles. So the question is not, will you encounter the obstacles along the path, but how will you choose to deal with them when they come up? When something isn't working, well come up with alternative plans and activities to achieve your goals. When you implement your strategy, the great news is that a lot of times it will work, but the bad news is sometimes it won't. And when it doesn't, you need to be flexible. You need to adapt. You need to be able to be focusing on adjusting a little bit by bit by bit. Whenever you don't get the result that you want, you adapt, you become flexible. Whenever you don't get the feedback, you again learn from that feedback, you adapt it. Whenever you start to find yourself in a position where you're not going towards your goal, you're able to be flexible so that you're able to get back on track. Sometimes it might be flexible about it, the, the particular goal itself. But what's imperative is that you're being as flexible as possible so that no matter what happens, you're always coming up with creative and innovative ways to move towards where you want to get to. Flexibility is key. When your plans aren't working, you may get disappointed. And at times of frustration, you'll be attracted to dream stealers. Beware of goal critics and dream stealers. And here's another thing about your goal. When you set your goals, only share them with people who are going to build them, inspire them, encourage them, and hold you accountable to them. Don't share your goal with dream busters, vision stillers. Don't share your goals with people who are energy vampires, those individuals who never thought they could do it, and so they don't wanna believe you could do it either. 
Be kind to your future. Be kind to yourself on who you share your goal with. And then lastly, when you share your goals with people, don't expect everyone to believe them. Don't expect everyone to see it with you. Because I call them God, you call them whatever you choose. But when God gave you the vision for that goal, God only gave it to you. I didn't give it to everyone. So if you're the only person that can see your goal, you're the only person that can get the vision, know that it's because it was given to you. There will be supporters, on the other hand, who will empower your aspirations because they're also pursuing their dreams and goals just like you do. Remember to hang out with your support group who will push you all the way to the top. So you got to be saying, okay, I need to speak this, I need to share it with people, and I need to get some comrades, some people with me who are going to be my champions or be along with me. If you're trying to lose weight, you got to have a workout buddy. You know, if you're trying to finish your book, you got to have an editor or a writing buddy. If you're trying to uh, get that promotion at work, you need to have a mentor or another peer who's also going for that promotion who you can talk with and strive with. You've got to socialize both your learning and the sharing of your goals. Because if those two things aren't happening, you don't have somebody to learn with and strive with, and no one knows what your specific goals are, then the odds of you sticking and staying on track are very low. When pursuing a goal, the most important thing is to continually hold in your mind that picture of yourself successfully achieving the goal. Think about your goals all day long. And here's another crucial difference. You see, I've found that when you look at people not achieving their goals, they're setting them, but it's not infiltrating their consciousness. They're not fully immersed in their goals most of the day. And it's just my experience that if you're not fully immersed in your goals all through the day, you rarely achieve them. So when you walk down to the shops at lunchtime, think about your goals. When you uh, are heading home, think about your goals. When you go to the restroom, think about your goals. You want to 10x how much time of the day you're spending thinking about your goals. Now I know that might seem extreme, but if you just do standard goal setting, then you're going to get the kind of results that most people get, which are, are really, really poor. You want to have it so that at least 80% of what you're thinking about during the day, the work day, are your goals. Now when you do that, things will happen. When you do that, you're going to come up with ideas on how to move things forward. When you do that, you're going to notice opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily notice if you weren't thinking of your goals all day long. That is a crucial ingredient in effective goal setting that almost nobody does. And here is the best part of goal realization. Develop a magnificent obsession in life. A lifetime goal can be a magnificent obsession. What is your lifetime goal? How do you want to be remembered by the generations that come after you? What is your magnificent obsession? It's when you dedicate your life to a powerful and compelling cause. What's your goal? What's your dream? What will your legacy be at the end of the day when you leave here? What are three things that you want said about you? when you check out, because we're gonna all go. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. <laughs> you know, a lot of people go through life not attempting to do anything big or major with their lives because they are trying to play it safe. Hello, listen to me. Hello, there's no safe position in life. Hello, there's no safe position. You can't get out of here alive. You're gonna die anyhow. Here's something you can do to develop a magnificent obsession. Make the best use of drawings, photos, pictures, and other visual aids to assist you in visualizing your goals. Visualization is a very powerful tool. Make the most of it. The most important part about visualization is not to see yourself cross the finish line. It's to see what do you do when the struggle happens to maintain. Right? So if you want to run a marathon, as an example, lots of people say, well, visualize yourself running across the marathon line. Visualize that, visualize that, visualize that. I'm like, actually, no. Visualize yourself getting up for months and months and months, going for those morning runs, practicing. Visualize yourself when you are running the marathon, right in the middle of the marathon, when you're at, let's say, well, let's say you're at like mile 13, you know, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't possibly do any more. Visualize yourself overcoming that struggle. That's where an emotional sort of anchor sets in 
for making a goal important. When not only do you visualize yourself doing it, but struggling through to make it happen. Then yes, visualize yourself running across that finish line. If you keep having goals that fall off onto the wayside or fall on the back burner, it's because you're not revisiting them. You need to revisit it, visualize it, see it, right? Really make it a visual thing. Tell the story, see it in your mind. In order to help you even do that better is you need to have a weekly revisit, what I call weekly scoring, okay? Every week on a Sunday, I think about all the goals of the week I just had and all the goals of the week I have coming up and I literally measure myself. I'm like, hey, how did I do? On a scale of one to 10 last week, how'd I do? Eight, I did good. Six, I was not so good. Four, I sucked, <laughs> okay? And I rate myself every single Sunday. I think it's really important that you take a look at your goals on a weekly basis and rate. How was your performance? How did you do? Not just did you accomplish all of them because you know what, life comes up. Your kid gets sick, you get tired, some big emergency happens in the business. Something will always come up that will prevent us from achieving every goal that we have every single week. But it's a good idea to say, where did I mess up? Where did I quit? Where did I stop? Not to berate yourself or be hard on yourself, just to acknowledge where you're at. Because if you're not looking at your goals on a weekly basis at least, I mean, what are the odds you'll keep working towards them? Just because they're a to-do list in your calendar doesn't mean you're gonna keep going after them. That's why I like to put those things together. Visualize in the morning and at the end of every single week, look at how you're doing in the goals. Constant visualization leads to an obsession. When it's supported by action, it will become a magnificent obsession. And so dream big and then get detailed and stay in action. Most people dream about their dream way too long. They're dreaming, but they're not in action. Joan Baez says that action is the antidote to despair. Lisa Nichols adds, action is the prescription for that success you say you want. When people ask me, how did I do it? I said, the only difference between you and I is that I'm in more action on a daily basis than you. So what I love about action, radical action, is that it's available to everybody. Get in radical action, and then you'll see things happen. What do you love? What turns you on? What do you really want in your life? For your life? How do you want to show up in the world? How do you want to use this gift called life? It's been said that life is, is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. Whatever your goals are, your personal goal, your financial goal, or this social contribution, your legacy, your mark, what you think about it. And here's what I know, that it's possible. Here's what I know, that if you think about it, what you think about, you bring about. If you're willing to put in the work, it's possible. If you continue to encourage yourself, continue to fall forward. I've got a saying, when life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Your dream is possible.